I'm a former visa officer, and a lot of my clients ask me, how do I pass my B1, B2 visa interview? Today I'm going to talk to you specifically about the B1, B2 visa and why it might be different than some other visa classes that you may have applied for or that other people that you've heard of applying have told you about. The B1, B2 visa is a business or pleasure visa. It basically means going to the U.S. for a, a wide variety of purposes, including tourism, uh, medical care, uh, business trips, conventions, uh, attending your cousin's wedding. It can be for any of these reasons. The way that it's the most different from other visa types is that the purpose is almost wide open, right? The purpose is not really what the visa class is focused on. It's more your personal situation. Everything that you've got in your resume, your profession, your savings, your financial situation, your education, your prior travel, that's the focus rather than your purpose of travel to the U.S. They may still ask you about your purpose of travel to the U.S. They want to know what you're going to do, is it going to be a valid use of the visa, etc. But it's not that one purpose is better than another purpose. Those questions are more just to get a feel for who you are, what you might be doing. What they really need to know is do you overcome 214B? Now, other visa types, let's say an H1B, well, there's a job that's connected to that H1B. An F1 visa for a student. There's a university connected to that visa through the I-24 that issued it. You're going in with the B1, B2 visa application though, completely on your own. You're the only person that's involved in submitting that. It's just you filling out the DS-160, going to the visa officer at the consulate or embassy and saying, I would like permission to travel to the US for a short duration of time for a variety of purposes. Okay, now how are you going to achieve that? Well, you need to bring your highlights to the forefront. Whatever your highlights are, this is a very general discussion meant for everyone who's gonna be watching this, tens of thousands of people who are going to be watching this, and I can't pick out the highlights for all of you individually without knowing what your situation is. What I can tell you is that you do need to identify those highlights. Is your highlight that you've already traveled outside of your country many times to other countries, maybe in the region, maybe globally? Is it that you've financially been very successful? That you've, uh, that you've been successful in your job, in your career, you have a very prestigious position in your, in your company where you work. Perhaps it's that your family is wealthy, even though you aren't really uh, doing anything to earn an income right now, but your family is well off uh, and middle class, and so there's no reason for you to not come back to your country. Maybe it's your education, right? Maybe it's your job that's sending you to the US. It could be one of any number of things. You need to know what is it about your situation that makes you a person who's going to go to the US and in the mind of the visa officer, they're confident that after that trip to the US, you will be going back to your home country and not staying in the US. Okay, the B1, B2 interview is probably has the potential to be the shortest of any of these interviews because the visa officers have some rubrics, they have some templates, they have some archetypes and some stereotypes that they're going to apply to try to get to a decision as fast as possible. In most consulates and embassies, the great majority of the visa interviews that they will conduct are B1, B2 interviews. And those are the ones that they have to do as quickly as possible so that they don't get behind. They've already got a long wait time. They don't want it to get any longer. They're trying to go fast. So when you come to the visa window and they say, okay, what's your purpose of travel to the US? Your answer is very important because they are going to start to put you into a box, a preconceived box where they're thinking, okay, I know that I've seen applicants that fit into this stereotype and these ones I issue visas to. But this other box is a profile for applicants who don't get their visa issued. And so from your very first answer, they're starting to shuffle you into one of those boxes or the other. You've got to make sure that you're presenting yourself as an issuable applicant and not as a refusable applicant. So focus on those highlights, know what your highlights are, and be ready to present that at the beginning of your interview. That's how you're going to get your visa issued.